Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Sometimes life throws us a wrench and it leaves us totally blindsided and knocked out. It would be easy to lay down and give up if you're a quitter. But today on our space, we get back up and throw some punches. Wife is leaving me, I guess. I'm having a very hard time. Not sure what I should do. Hello. Added some extra info at the bottom. Hey, so my wife, 31, and I am 30. We met when we were 15, 16 in 2006 and got married right before I joined the army in 2015. We have two kids, nine and 10. I hurt my back in the army and I am TDIU and I use it to pay the bills. So since we moved in together, I've always paid the bills. She has gotten jobs several times for one to six months at a time, but never anything consistent. She got a new job again two months ago and this is the highest paying job she's ever had, $21 an hour and all the overtime she wants. Back in September of 2021, we went to a Kia dealership and I co-signed for her a car for $24,000. And just recently, I financed her an Apple Watch for Mother's Day. I don't care about the money at all, but I'm just like, how out of nowhere this is. She worked from September to like October at that last job and ended up unable to pay her car payment. So I took over paying her car and her insurance. I wanted her to either get a job or start school. And after I helped her get set up with school, she found her current job, so she started working again. We made a three-month plan to get to July 1st and be back ahead of the car payments again. So for the last six weeks, she's been constantly at work, like working a double that's 16 hours, so she's really only been here to sleep. She came home six days ago and said she wants to move out, but stay married, and she lives somewhere else while the kids and I stay here. When I try and talk to her about working it out and ask her to stay, she said that it's toxic at home and she just wants to focus on herself. She learned to be happy without me and that maybe down the line we could try to work on it. When I pressed her on details of what she means about things, she's like, well, we can get divorced and won't do counseling. She's leaving and how she loves me and I am a great dad, but she's not in love with me. I don't know how to process that. I love her so much, it hurts and I can't understand just not loving her anymore. She said how we don't have things in common and how we met when we were young and we were so codependent and that maybe down the line we could work something out and move in again somewhere else, but she won't come back to this house. She just says it's a toxic environment and complains about it being dirty or not up to her standard of clean, but I do my best. The house gets cleaned top to bottom two to four times a week. It's just when she was a stay at home mom, she would clean every day and she thinks of stuff I don't like wiping down the back of the toilet and all of the surfaces of the bathrooms every time. I'm fine to do whatever, it just would take me practice to get as good as her, and it's like she's so hypercritical of me, and when I point out good things, she's just like it's a lot of things, and do not want to try and work on anything at all right now. But we are still living together. I just don't get why we can't do counseling, or at least try to work on us. But I guess if she doesn't love me, then she would have nothing to gain from counseling. I'm heartbroken. She was my best friend and we have literally spent the last 16 years planning our future together. She's just like, oh well, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore, which hurts super bad and makes me want to die, but I'm not going to do anything. She can't move for at least another month, and I'm supposed to just sit here and hold it all together for the kids? It's been really hard cleaning the whole house and making sure the kids are taken care of. It's like I'm just suddenly a single dad. We were doing really good, and then I had a flare up with my back and couldn't really walk the last 20 days, but I'm finally coming out of it, so I am getting more movement. But she came home and told me she doesn't love me after I was coming out of the flare-up, so for the last six days, I've been effed off. I keep crying thinking about our life and it's giving me headaches. I also tested positive for COVID yesterday and I'm feeling really crap from that too. My family and friends all live in Portland and other states and I'm up in Tacoma, Washington, near Fort Lewis. I was fine not being around everyone because I had my wife, but now I don't know what to do. I can't sleep and when I do I have nightmares and sweat like crazy. I miss her so much it hurts, and I can't function. I just want to shut down, but I've got to keep going, and I just don't understand how she can just be like, oh, by the way, I'm just not in love with you anymore. I bought a bunch of healthy food and told the kids we were going to start exercising consistently again, but I'm lonely as hell. I wish she would just be like, oh yeah, my meds were all way off. I don't know why I said that, I don't love you. I really miss her, and I guess I'm just posting this as a way of attempting to process the situation. Additional info, the kids are staying with me, she said she's getting a two-bedroom apartment so they can visit her on the weekends. I'm upset and feel blindsided, and I have COVID right now, so I feel like extra super crap on top of it all. 
but I agree I need to just move forward and focus on what's best for the kids. Additional info. Wanted to mention she started taking higher and higher doses of Prozac over the last year, and as she went up, our sex life died off. She said it was a side effect of the medication and she would try to figure it out if her doctor could do anything. Update. So I asked her if she would show me her phone, and she would not. I asked her like three times to please just be honest with me and I wouldn't be upset and that I'm already over it. So she was like, I'm only worried about myself, the only person I'd want to be with would be you, but I don't want to be with you anymore. I was quit, and then she said that the only thing I could even remotely be upset about was that she had a crush on a guy she works with, but that she's pretty sure he has a girlfriend, so it's whatever. Like this was a real conversation we just had. I'm not going to lie, when she said that it was like getting stabbed in the chest, I felt confident in myself and keeping my composure after reading everyone's supportive responses all night, but I wasn't prepared for her to say that. You guys were right. I googled divorce lawyers and sent one my info for a consultation. She's upstairs laying down, and I'm downstairs hanging out with the kids. I felt so betrayed when she said she had a crush some guy at work. It's definitely 100% over, and hopefully my sadness can turn into anger, because this is BS and I don't deserve it. The community has some responses. Al329 says, Sorry man, sucks. If one side doesn't want to work on things, then you can't force it. Maybe some time away will help her decide what she wants. In that time, you should go get mental health help. You have to take care of yourself so that you can be there for your kids. Beowulf 2 8B23 says, She is already seeing someone else, buddy. Hit her with the divorce papers before she does. This way you will have some control. It's going to suck and hurt like hell, but you'll survive and find someone who can appreciate you. Been there. Even better if you two can be civil and keep the money out of the lawyer's pockets. Only winners in divorce are the lawyers. Meanwhile, you and your kids suffer. Ah, I'm sorry, OP. I feel like her meds have something to do with this. I think this might make sense of the fact that this seemed to have happened suddenly. However, that being said, I think she is probably cheating on you. There's too many unknowns. And the fact that she wants her own space? Probably to do with what she pleases. As in, entertain another man. It sucks that she's willing to throw it all away despite all you've done for her and your history together. There's definitely something unstable going on there. Update. Hello, I made a post about my wife leaving me and how I was lost and all of you commenting and talking with me has really, really helped me get through the last two days. As a lot of you said, there was most likely someone else and you were right. She wouldn't let me look at her phone but swore up and down she wasn't cheating. I asked her to please just be honest and after pressing her on it, she admitted she has a crush on a coworker. While I have been trying to get everything done as quick as possible, I closed our joint account, there wasn't any money in the account, and I told her this morning that she needed to go to T-Mobile and start herself an account. I don't care about the phone I paid for, but if she wants to keep her number, she needs to go open an account and port it over. She seemed upset, and when I asked what's up, she said I was trying to screw her over money-wise. I explained that it doesn't really cost much to take a phone you own and start your own account, and I said that I want the kids during the week, my car, the dog, and the house, and that she wants the cat, her car, and the kids on the weekend, and to go rent her own apartment so if she's cool with it, we can file uncontested divorce ASAP. But if she wants to contest it, that's fine too. I'm not asking for money from her to pay for it, and I'll pay it with a loan. <clears throat> I want her off my dears, off my medical, off my bills, and anything else. I told her I need the divorce papers to remove her from those things, and I want it done ASAP. I told her she would have to change her name herself. I can't do that for her. She started crying, not super hard, and asked what changed from last week, and I told her that even if she can't see it, she's having an emotional affair with her coworkers that she had a crush on. She got super defensive and stated that she doesn't even talk to him like that and that they are not even friends and I will regret my actions in six months, insinuating that we would try to get back together after she will have worked on herself or whatever. All I said was hopefully by then I can find someone who actually loves me and I walked out of the room as she was saying something else. She just kept trying to say she wasn't cheating and that she just wants to go work on herself and that I'm so stupid for thinking she's pursuing anyone. She's like, oh, I don't wanna be with anyone. I didn't say this, but I thought, yeah, well, I need a wife and a partner I can count on. I didn't engage. I just said what I needed to say and left. Am I doing this right? It's really, really, really hard to stay strong, as a big part of me still loves her no matter what I say, but I can't reconcile those feelings with the feeling of betrayal. I just want her to gone as quickly as possible now, and she's acting like she won't be able to afford to move on the 1st of July now. Why is she trying to switch it up? I'm sure at this point it's a manipulative tactic to give herself some security and peace of mind regarding the situation. I don't know. The community knows. Ravenous Fringe says, get a lawyer. Uncontested doesn't mean blind. Curly as F says, 
You're correct on all fronts. She wanted her own place so she could potentially screw her coworker. Good luck, man. Rifleman LAX says, I have a crush and a coworker. That's how it starts. The info coming out like a little crack in the dam. If you keep pressing, it'd be, we only went out to dinner once. Then, we kissed after dinner, but I didn't mean to. He just leaned into me. People just never want to admit everything all at once. MG Shamster says, it's called trickle truth. Just a little bit of truth at a time. Just enough to placate you so you're not mad anymore. Then, when you get mad again, they trickle a little more truth out. It's especially true as you discover one of the lies, and they admit only to lie and hide the rest. You're absolutely doing this right, OP. There's no way you can keep providing for her when she's doing what she's doing. You need to protect yourself and your kids. She's using you. She's trying to have her cake and eat it too. No way. No longer. No more free rides. If she wants to focus on herself and she's learned to be happy on her own, then she needs to provide for herself. Simple as that. What are your thoughts? Update. I filed for divorce this morning. I have a lawyer. My wife sent me the following this morning. I don't know why you're acting like this. You're trying to build a case against me one minute and want to be cordial the next. O'Keefe and I have only been talking to each other the last two weeks. I have been fully single for much longer than that, so don't try to act like I'm doing anything wrong so that you can feel the victim somehow. I'm sorry crap didn't work out. We were both at fault and I wish it could have worked out differently, but now I'm just trying to be the best me and figure out how to be happy. She started working at this place May 1st, and as of June 5th, she was telling me she didn't love me and wanted to move out and work on herself. After asking her to please do counseling and work on saving our marriage, five days later she admitted to having a crush on a guy at work, but that nothing would happen and he had a girlfriend. And today, just barely over two months of working there, she sent me the above message. She keeps saying that her deciding to leave me and then her talking to this guy are separate. She blew up our 16 year marriage in a matter of two months but says she started talking to this guy two weeks ago? There's a lot more context in the, my post history. I don't think I'm acting like a victim. She makes promises to the kids that she doesn't keep. She doesn't pay anything toward bills or rent or food and leaves messes after herself. She's supposedly moving out next week, but she changes things every day. Is she trying to manipulate me? I don't understand how she can try and act like she is taking the high ground and I'm just an a-hole who is trying to be a victim. Thank you. More community comments from Switchboard Friend. Notice what she said and didn't say. She said that nothing would happen because he had a girlfriend, not nothing would happen because she was married and faithful. You can bet that she was talking to him well before to sound him out at the very least, probably more besides. When she says that she's only been talking with him for the last two weeks, that's a euphemism. And he wrote up, her continued contact isn't helpful. Just talk through lawyers now and let the divorce industry machinery do what it does best. Oh, you aren't a victim, you're a survivor. There's a big difference. A deleted user says, she's playing her cards and waiting until she either gets an okay it's clear from him or until she finds something better. I understand, 16 years is a long time, but don't waste any more time on someone who tells you they don't love you anymore. Because even if you try to move on with them, you will question every single time that they tell you that they love you. A small part of you will always doubt them and rightfully so. You deserve better. And someone who cleans up after themselves and takes care of responsibilities. She's totally spiraling and you need to get out of there and make responsible decisions to protect you and your kids. You're not just an a-hole playing the victim. She's definitely manipulating you and even gaslighting you by making it seem like you're the crazy one for accusing her of infidelity. They do this so you doubt yourself. Stay strong. Do you think she's trying to manipulate OP? Update. So two weeks prior to July 6th would be June 22nd. So while we are still married and living together the entire time, she started dating this guy 19 days after telling me she just wanted to move out and work on herself, but we could stay married? Am I wrong for thinking this is messed up, that it's all so close together? She keeps telling me I'm trying to be a victim and that she didn't cheat because we haven't been together in a long time. I literally took her out to dinner on Mother's Day in May and bought her an Apple Watch. I have bad sciatica in my leg and hip. She won't let me sleep in my bed that I specifically bought to deal with my pain. I got really upset this morning because I had a very hard time sleeping last night and she woke me up going to use my Amazon account to check on an order she made. She said she wanted to know if her sunglasses have showed up. I tried to just check it and go back to sleep, but when I checked the account on June 22nd, she had ordered a sexy school girl outfit and it just hurt. I thought I was being strong, but seeing that cut deep. Thrilla de Gorilla chimes in, I don't know. Why do you feel you're not allowed to stand up for yourself? Not sure why you're tolerating such treatment but you'll feel a lot better about yourself when you stop putting up with her BS. If I'm in your shoes, she would be getting served divorce papers in a heartbeat, like zero hesitation. 
Update. Help deciding what to do about ex-wife. Basically, she was just served yesterday and called the school to see how many absences the kids have had so far. They have missed four to five days since the start because they got sick. I just left the school and they changed the absences to excused. Kids are back in school, but today my ex sent this via text. I would like to see the environment my kids are living in. If you can't let me come look, I will have an official come do a welfare check on them. I'm concerned about their health. I said, what specifically are you asking for? She replied, I ask the same when they go to friends' houses. I have a right to see how they are living and that it's healthy and safe for them. If you can't do a video walkthrough with me, at the very least, then I have no option but to have someone else check on them. I'm not judging. I don't care how you live. I only care about their health. My daughter was sick throwing up, but she's all better now. My son has asthma and has an upper respiratory infection he's taking meds for and has been using his inhaler. I think the smoke in the air agitated his breathing. There have been fires lately and air quality has been lower than usual. I feel like this is just her trying to find a way to exert control over me and stress me out because she is mad that I am asking for child support. My house is clean, but I'd like to feel like I'm doing the right thing by telling her that no, she is not going to invade my privacy like that. If an official shows up, I'm not worried about anything they would see. I think she is trying to manipulate me into doing what she wants. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Bell 17 starts off this round of comments. Get a lawyer's advice, mate. Seriously, we don't know the laws of where you live. Get the advice of a lawyer about custody and her rights, etc. I think she doesn't have the right to demand a visit, but like she said, she could make a demand or maybe she will make a false report and then maybe having a visit from child services would look bad on your file for future custody arrangements. But I don't know, talk to a lawyer or at least read the laws when it comes to parental rights and custody. Mrs. Jingles adds, get your lawyer involved. She is not entitled to access your home. She has no right or authority. Don't do it or she'll keep harassing you. Get a child custody app and cut all other contact. You have to file a harassment against her to protect yourself and children. She's just trying to hit you where it hurts. Stay strong. What do you make of OP's ex's behavior? Update. Advice regarding my wife and her actions requests. Update. For anyone interested, my lawyer advised me that I should not provide her with the social security card information. Thank you all for the support. Hello, awesome people. Thank you for taking the time to look at my situation. Feel free to check my profile for additional context. My wife was cheating with a coworker and I found out over the month of June. August 15th, she finally moved out after causing so much chaos. I have been trying to focus on the kids and myself and get us all into counseling and just support them as best I can while trying to navigate this awful situation. I have a lawyer. My wife has been served. I sent my lawyer an email today asking if I should give my wife what she is asking for, but she hasn't got back to me and at this point, I doubt she will before Monday. So if you're still here, thank you for your time. And here's what I'm actually looking for advice about. She wants me to send her the kids' social security numbers so she can get rental assistance. She says she is broke and needs the kids' numbers to get rental assistance. I'm apprehensive to give her the information because I don't understand how she has no money or how she can say she has the kids for rental assistance when they've only been to her apartment twice. I'm worried she actually has money and is trying to get rental assistance so she can use her paycheck to get a lawyer or that she is going to try and claim the kids on taxes when she hasn't supported them at all. Or she may be trying to do some other fraudulent thing with them. The kids don't live with her. She moved out August 15th and has seen the kids four times, only once overnight. Kids just told me today that when they stayed the night, her boyfriend was there. She doesn't know that they told me, but I have made it extremely clear that I do not want the kids around this guy. And even the kids have told her that they would rather spend time with just her. Below is her text message exchange regarding the issue. I need you to call me ASAP. I need you to send me pictures of the kids' social security cards that I can prove that I have children in order to get assistance with my rent for October. I need this as soon as possible today, please. Or even just the number. Please, James. I can see that you're getting my messages. Is there a reason you're not responding? I need the kids' social security numbers. Even if you want primary custody, I will need their information as their other parent. Why are you ignoring this? I'm trying to maintain my place to live. I will send you money today, but I need to get a hold of you in order to do that. I am extremely sick. I will look into it and get back to you. I'll have an answer for you tomorrow by 3 p.m. I don't understand what there is to answer. I don't understand what there is to answer. You have their cards. I just need the numbers so I can get financial assistance for October before I'm given an eviction. This is a very time sensitive matter. Why didn't you pay your rent when you got paid on the 5th? I didn't have the money. My check was very small. There wasn't overtime for September. We got financial assistance in March. I tried to get it again in June, July, but was denied and told it's only available once per year. How are you 20 days into October and haven't paid your rent? 
I'm sorry, but I really don't understand. You make more per month than I do, have less expenses, but somehow you're always working and always broke. I don't understand. Like I said, I'll let you know at the latest 3 p.m. tomorrow. I have to protect myself and the kids, so I need you to just give me 20 hours. I have had no extra overtime. I have never gotten assistance and have pay stubs and bill invoices that show that I'm struggling this month. I'm on the verge of eviction and working with a program to prevent that. I don't understand why you're holding our children's social security numbers from me. I've never given you a reason to distrust my attentions with them. I'm not asking for legal advice. I'm asking for opinions. She keeps calling and texting me over and over asking me to send her pictures of the cards. I want to tell her to kick rocks and ask her boyfriend for help. I don't want to ever see or speak to her, but continue to do so because of the kids. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Advice from the community starts off with Night's End 2. Don't do it until your lawyer answers. Second, I would personally have tipped my hand a tiny bit and told her that her boyfriend spending the night with your kids this soon was absolutely a reason to doubt her intentions with the kids. Trust is earned and she opened up her account with a huge withdrawal before making any deposits. Bob Sham adds, This. Definitely don't do anything till your lawyer confirms, etc. This situation is very suspicious. By the way, all communications regarding non-child care issues to go through your lawyer in future. Anything else to be ignored. Also, no. Don't help her out. It is not about being vindictive. You've separated with intention to divorce. You're no longer responsible for her health and finances. Don't do it for the kids. It's just another way for her to keep using and abusing you. If she isn't trying to scam you, but rather simply can't be financially responsible, too bad, so sad. Then she's not a safe, good mother. You should seek sole custody. OK Culture 3935 says, you are asking legal advice. First advice given is to take or secure all legal documents, including birth certificates, passports, and social security cards. Please stop doing the back and forth over text. You are in an adversarial divorce. Do nothing until you hear from your lawyer. Response, we are in the process of a divorce and I must run this past my attorney first. I will let you know the answer Monday. End of text, period. No back and forth about where she spent her money. You know where with whom she spent her money. The OP replies, additional info. I've already blocked her everywhere else. This conversation took place over a co-parenting app. I'm not hiding the social security cards. She moved and didn't care to get copies of important documents and is now asking me to provide her copies. Don't give in. You're not responsible for her anymore. She's had a free ride up until this point and she needs to learn how to manage her funds. She needs to learn how to be responsible for her actions. She did this to herself. What are your final thoughts? And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. And if you want to listen to me tell more stories, check out Our Lounge, where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there!